So, the topic for today is antipsychotics induced akathisia, and the focus is treatment options. This is very, very common, common topic because um, akathisia is unfortunately common and um, there are many kinds of movement disorders we see from antipsychotics, right? It actually ranges from akathisia to dystonia to Parkinsonism to tardive dyskinesias to tremors but our focus is on akathisia today. So um, I will request um, all of you, if you can, um, in the comment section, post your medication of choice for antipsychotic induced akathisia, because um, I want to see um, uh, which medicines you all are using. Let's learn from each other experience so this is what this discussion comes down to which adjunctive medications have shown efficacy for antipsychotic induced akathisia and to answer this question i want i want you to focus on this article published um, in jama psychiatry in march 7th 2024 so this was actually the first network meta-analysis to explore the efficacy of any adjunctive drugs for antipsychotic induced akathisia. And that's why this, uh, that's why I felt that we should talk about this. Uh, now, let's see what did they found. The first medication uh, is mirtazapine. Uh, and uh, well, Ali mentioned mirtazapine here, which is very interesting because this had, was the highest in that in the study that was published right now. So this is the table. Mirtazapine had the highest evidence based on this study. Um, uh, they said 15 milligram per day is what they found to be efficacious and uh, moderate to large effect sizes for mirtazapine compared to all the other medications they found. Actually, there was a, a second medication with moderate to large effect sizes. We'll talk about that. Uh, but mirtazapine consistently ranked first uh, in both main analysis, and they also did a subgroup analysis, but I will not go into that. But mirtazapine stood out. But we all know that uh, mirtazapine is not free of side effects, right? You need to weigh risk and benefit. Sedation and weight gain, the metabolic side effects are a realistic concerns. So although it was the first one in the study here, but I will say be cautious of the side effects because uh, ideally speaking, we don't want to treat side effect of one medicine and create another side effect. But please, mirtazapine is the number one here right now. Very good medication with that. Now, this was actually the first antidepressant. There is another antidepressant. They found it to be efficacious. And uh, the author mentioned that there may be a role of serotonin, 5-HT2A, I believe, that 5-HT2 uh, receptors in the improvement in akathisia. But I felt like uh, it may be more to do with alpha receptor action of mirtazapine uh, because uh, when you look at other studies, I have not talked about this, but clonidine is one of the medicine which have also shown efficacy for akathisia. This article did not mention that medication, but it has the alpha action. So maybe it was that why mirtazapine came on top. The second medication is bipyridin. Now this is an, like an anticholinergic class. So we all are used to um, using uh, anticholinergic like benzodiazepine, right? Uh, for these akathisia. The studies are very conflicted on that. And this article uh, did not mention uh, benzodiazepine either, uh, uh, co cogentin either. 
But bipyridine is one of those with an anticholinergic action. It is actually used for Parkinsonism and for medication-induced uh, motor disorders management. Uh, so this was the second medication to be showing efficacy. You can see in the table on the right, after mirtazapine, this was the second one. And the dose they found to be efficacious was between 2.5 to 15 milligram per day. Optimal dose was close to 12 milligram per day. And the duration they found to be effective was two weeks. So minimum two weeks of that was uh, shown to be effective. But uh, now I will talk about that in a few minutes. They also mentioned that uh, this is a better option in patients who have failed mirtazapine, which is the first one here, and vitamin B6. I'll talk about that next. Uh, but let's go to vitamin B6 because this is very interesting. Um, uh, they found this to be e equally effective, 600 milligram per day dosing. Uh, this was the best option in terms of risk to benefit ratio. Because benefit is there, right? When, uh, now I'm talk, comparing mirtazapine with vitamin B6. Benefit is there, but risk is more with mirtazapine here. That is what they're referring to. Um, and even with biparidine, there is a risk, side effect risk with that medication. Uh, but this vitamin B6 had the best option in terms of risk benefit ratio. And the major potency lies in its uh, excellent tolerability and excellent acceptability profile for patient. Uh, um, so uh, I will talk about that, but in my opinion, and this is my opinion, we should give this a first try, followed by mirtazapine, followed by bipyridine. How do you feel about that? And this is just my personal uh, thoughts on um, this article when I reviewed, but let's move forward. So these are the three medication. The fourth medication they found effective for adjunctive treatment for antipsychotic-induced akathisia is Mianserin. This is the another antidepressant with action on um, dopamine and serotonin, but it also has the ser uh, alpha action. Um, um, it's actually not approved, not available, I think, in United States. I've never given this, but it's approved uh, in European countries, I believe. And uh, you can see here in the table, so 15 milligram per day dosing, very similar to mirtazapine dosing. It has good tolerability profile except for sedation, just like mirtazapine. So... Um, the, they also mentioned that 10 to 20% of the patients do not respond to mirtazapine and mianserine. So keep an eye on that. And uh, the fifth one is trazodone. So you must be thinking all these sedative antidepressants are showing efficacy here. Um, so sedation is the common side effect of these three antidepressants we have talked about. And uh, trazodone is here on the right. You can look at the, that data. 100 milligram per day was found to be effective, but drowsiness, sedation is a major risk. You all need to be mindful of other things, right? I'll not go into trazodone. We use it a lot. Uh, and the sixth one is propranolol. And um, this data is not oh, a new for propranolol. We all know the efficacy of this beta blocker, propranolol. Um, and the studies found that a dose between 20 to, one, uh, one, 20 to 120 milligram uh, was found to be effective, but the important key is they found no evidence for dose more than 50 milligram. Is that what you all see as well? Uh, do you feel like, uh, uh, do you ever use a uh, propranolol dose beyond 50 milligram for akathisia? I have used in selective patients with good response, but as you all know that as the dose goes up beyond 50 milligram, the hypotension risk goes up. And um, they also, they, the efficacy is very similar to another beta blocker, betaxolol, which have also shown to be effective for akathisia. Now, the interesting thing is the See, beta blockers, good efficacy. I also found studies for clonidine, as I talked about alpha, alpha blocker. So 
be mindful there are options like that, but this study did not mention that. Now I'm looking at the chat here. So Harold mentioned, what about prophylactic vitamin B6? Well, that is what I was thinking too. Uh, I don't see any risk of giving somebody prophylactic vitamin B6. Um, because when I, when I did my residency, this uh, benzotropin prophylaxis was so common. And I still see like many of those treatment resistant schizophrenia patients on prophylactic cogentin. If I have the choice, I will go for prophylactic vitamin B6 over benzotropin because the impact of anticholinergic on constipation, drowsiness, dry mouth, blurry vision, and fall risk and memory impairment, especially in elderly, is very high. But yeah, I agree. I mean, Harold, I will, I will go for uh, prophylactic vitamin B6 with this one. But uh, if anyone is using vitamin B6, please let us know. Have you found any um, uh, side effect risk with vitamin B6 at the dose uh, this article is talking about? So friends, uh, let me actually go to the next slide now. Uh, this is a summary of these medication that we talked about. So, mirtazapine, biperidine, and vitamin B6, they exhibited moderate to large effect size with comparable, comparable efficacy. And as I said, mirtazapine consistently ranked on top for main analysis and subgroup analysis. And vitamin B6 should be, maybe, they say maybe considered the best option in terms of risk benefit ratio. And I think that answers your question, Harold. Uh, I think it's worth giving this a, as a prophylaxis, especially for patients who are at high risk. And then uh, vaporating may be a best alternative if mirtazapine and B6 fails. So it looks like B6, followed by mirtazapine, followed by vaporidine are better. But out of these, I, will, I totally agree that propranolol should not be ignored. You see this empty box here? I'll talk about that. There, there was one another medicine which had very good results, but the reason they did not recommend it is the statistical analysis. I'll talk about that now. So these are the six medications you need to be uh, to keep an eye on. This was a very short presentation today based on this recent article that was published in JAMA Psychiatry. But till then, you all take care and bye for now. This is Dr. Singh signing off. Take care, everyone.